Welcome back to Coded World where we dive deep into the universe of programming. In this vast universe, code is the language that allows us to communicate, to create, and to solve problems. Our last rendezvous was about understanding the basics of functions, those magical boxes packed with gears and levers, working in harmony to execute our commands. Today, we're journeying further into this world, peeling back the layers of functions for a deeper exploration. Are you ready? Let's dive in. Imagine a city. Buildings in this city are like variables. Their size and location determine their scope. Now, let's walk down the streets of this city. See that small shop over there? That's a local variable. It's known in its immediate neighborhood, but go a few blocks away and you won't find anyone who knows about it. Now look up at that towering skyscraper piercing the skyline. That's a global variable. It's visible from anywhere in the city, known by all. It's always there, omnipresent. Then there's the static variable. Picture it as a historical monument. Just like a monument carries the weight of its past, the static variable remembers its previous value, even after the function has finished its job. So, we have our cityscape, a local variable is like a small shop, it exists only in its neighborhood. A global variable is like a huge skyscraper visible from anywhere in the city, and then there's the static variable, which can remember its past, much like a historical monument. Just like buildings have lifetimes, so do variables. Picture the bustling cityscape we've been exploring. Some buildings spring up and disappear quickly like pop-up shops. These are like our local variables. They're created when a function starts, they do their job, and then, poof, they're gone when the function finishes its task. They exist solely for the duration of the function. Now imagine our city's skyscrapers, standing tall and visible no matter where you are. These are like global variables. They're created outside of any function, and they're accessible from anywhere within our code. Unlike the pop-up shops, these skyscrapers don't vanish when a function is done. They're always there, watching over the city, until the entire program ends. And there you have it, the lifetimes of our variables, as intricate and varied as the lifetimes of city buildings. Local variables exist only while the function is active. Once it's done, they vanish. But global variables, they're always there, watching over the city. Now, consider functions as trains. They're the engines of our coded city constantly moving carrying passengers from one station to another. These passengers are what we call arguments. They hop onto the function train ready to be transported to their destination. The function train is a marvel of engineering. It's designed to carry specific types of passengers, numbers, words, or even other functions. It knows exactly where each passenger needs to go. But what's even more fascinating is that each function train is on a mission it doesn't just transport passengers, it performs actions, calculations, and operations. It transforms its passengers, turning them into something new. And when the function train reaches its destination, it doesn't just stop and unload, it proudly displays a sign, the return value. This is the result of its journey, the outcome of its operations. This return value is how the function train tells us what it has accomplished. When the train reaches its destination, it displays a sign, this is the return value, telling us the result of its journey. Not all passengers are the same, picture this, you're on a bustling train filled with a diverse crowd. Some passengers are numbers tucked away in the numbers compartment, others are words chatting away in the strings compartment. These compartments are much like data types in programming. Just as a train compartment is designed to accommodate its specific passengers comfortably, a data type defines what kind of data a variable can hold and how it's stored. Think of a Boolean data type sitting quietly in its own compartment, dealing only in true or false values. Then there's the integer compartment bustling with whole numbers, and the floating point compartment where numbers with decimal points reside. Each data type, like every compartment, has its own set of rules and characteristics. Just as a train runs smoothly when passengers are in their correct compartments, a function operates without hitches when data is stored in the appropriate data types. It's essential to ensure each passenger or argument is in the right compartment for the function to run smoothly. But what makes functions so magical? Their ability to be reused. Think of it as a well-crafted spell. Once you've mastered it, you can wield its power again and again, with just a wave of your wand. In the context of programming, this spell is your function. The beauty of reusable functions lies in their efficiency. Imagine a world where you had to rewrite the same code each time you needed it. That would be like cooking a meal from scratch every single day. But with reusable functions, you can cook a large batch of code and then simply reheat it whenever you're hungry for results. 
This concept of reusability not only saves time but also reduces the possibility of errors. Each time you write a line of code there's a chance of introducing a bug, but by reusing well-tested functions, you're significantly reducing this risk. Write once, use anywhere. This saves time, reduces errors, and makes our code cleaner. So from the towering skyscrapers to the bustling trains, everything in our coded world works in harmony, thanks to well-defined functions and their interactions with variables. We've journeyed through the magic of functions, the roles of variables, and the importance of data types. And remember, the power of coding lies in your hands. So, are you ready to continue this exciting exploration into the universe of programming? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and join our ever-expanding coded universe. Until next time, keep coding.